Hi, I'm Colin Walls and today I'm going to talk about programming languages for embedded systems. Now I'm sure most people would agree that standardization is a good thing. It's good to standardize on software, it's good to standardize on skills, because that makes everything much more portable, much more economic. So wouldn't it be good if there was a single programming language that covered all eventualities? Well, that isn't such a new idea. Back in the 1960s, IBM had exactly the same thought, and they created a language called PL1. Now, PL1 was a massive language. It had functionality to cover every eventuality in order to make it universal. And that was also its failing. What it meant was that everybody who used the language learnt a subset that addressed their particular needs. And therefore, they ended up using what amounts to a different language to their colleagues. So they were back to square one, they were all using different languages. Fast forward to now and looking at embedded systems and we have a degree of standardization. Most embedded systems programming is done in C and C++ along with a handful of other specialized languages. C and C++ are very standardized. There are ISO standards for them and that's great. It means that you should only buy tools that comply with the necessary standards, of course. However, these languages were not designed for embedded use. They just happened to fit the job quite well. However, there are a few bits of functionality which those languages lack, and we need to find ways of implementing that functionality. There are broadly three options. You can add extensions to the language. You can use compiler directives, usually using the hash pragma construct, or you can use the linker in creative ways to achieve the functionality that's required. All of those have possibilities. Let's first of all think about the adding extra keywords, extending the language. Even though in general this is not such a smart idea because it deviates from the standard, done in a modest way it does achieve a clean solution. There are really four extra keywords which are commonly implemented which stand out from the crowd. Firstly there is the pair, packed and unpacked. These two keywords are applied to data structures of one kind or another and determine how the data structure is laid out in memory. Typically, data can be put into memory in such a way that it can be accessed very quickly. In other words, it's packed, it's only, uh, sorry, it's unpacked, which means that it is not using memory very efficiently, but you can access it very fast. The alternative is packed, and that means the data is put into memory in such a way that it is uh, compressed and may take a little longer to read. Now those are normally um, options you choose on a compiler and these two keywords enable you to override the options you've chosen. The next keyword is interrupt. Interrupt simply enables you to declare a function as being an interrupt service routine, which means the compiler adds the extra bits of code that are needed to effect an interrupt service. And lastly, there is the ASM keyword. This really overcomes all other um, objectives in that it enables you to insert small fragments of assembly language code to implement functionality that isn't uh, available in the language itself. That really covers most eventualities and enables us to uh, use the language in an efficient kind of way. The resulting slight lack of portability is not so much of a big deal using these extra keywords. In fact, if you were to use the compiler directives and hash pragma, you'd end up with less portable code, which is not such a good idea. As I said, sometimes the linker can be used creatively. Um, if you've got good embedded tools, the linker will have a lot of functionality which will let you use memory in a controlled way, but it won't cover all the possibilities. So overall, modest extensions to the language are the clean way to make the languages suitable for embedded. That's all for today. Thanks for uh, tuning in and I'll see you again soon. Bye for now.